Then we have psychographic segmentation. So this is, well, it's said that demographic segmentation is like the skeleton, whereas psychographic segmentation adds the meat to the bones. It helps paint a better picture, just like qualitative data usually gives more uh, insight into marketing research. So psychographic uh, segmentation helps give better understanding of the market and the segments. Like you can see in that picture, all these people have different lifestyles, different approaches to life. The one guy is a bodyboarder, the other one likes music, the other one is a sportsman, the one likes dogs, and so forth. So first we have personality. This reflects a person's traits, attitudes, and habits. Like this, like some people are adventurous, they want to go white river rafting, they like risky, crazy, dangerous things. Like that, again, some people like exercise and mountain biking and being in nature. Whereas other people who are more maybe introverted, they like to chill at home, watch movies, you know, be at home on their sofa, relax, be comfortable. They don't want to go and do crazy things outside. Or, and maybe they like to read books and just be on the, by themselves. Which one are you? More extroverted, outdoorsy, more introverted, homey? Okay, personality helps us to best judge other people's characters and know what to expect of them. And we can even predict consumer behavior as a result of their personality traits. Cape Union Mart, for example, focuses on the extroverts. They want people, they encourage people to explore and they sell products to people who have that personality. Whereas Converse, for example, you know, in, encourages that kind of, um, or they sell to people who have that kind of hip, quirky personality who like to wear sneakers. Then we have motive. Marketers of baby products and life insurance products will consume, consume, will appeal to consumers' emotions. For example, those who want to care for their loved ones. That's their motive. They want to care for their loved ones. So here's a good example of an advert. Frank.net encourages life investment uh, for men. It's like look after your family even when you're gone. Take out life cover so that if you die, there's money you know, for your family. So encouraging that motivation to care and yeah, encouraging mothers to look after their babies um, and buy the best products, you know, that um, money can buy to help take care of the babies. Toyota, for example, appeals to the reliability motive. People who want reliable cars that can, you know, last them for their whole life. Mercedes and Jaguar, on the other hand, will appeal to status. People who want to buy a product in order to have status. That's their motive. Okay, then we have lifestyles. So this is based on the way that people spend their times. The importance of things around them. Their beliefs and their socio-economic characteristics. For example, their income and education will often determine their socio-economic characteristics. For example, you get the five eating lifestyles. You get those who are meat and potato eaters. You get those who are families with kids who, who drink a lot of cool drinks and eat a lot of cereals. Then you get people who are dieters. They watch what they eat. And then you have the natural food eaters. These people love organic foods and things like that. And then you have the sophisticates. These are people who have a high income and they like wine and Swiss chocolate and expensive cheeses and things like that. And in the picture, you can also see different lifestyles, like the guy who's... Um, who's a surfer, and that girl, I think she's sporty, then you have the guitarist, who's a musician, and, you know, the guy who likes to do miming, and the biker, and, you know, the hippie, and so forth, so these are different lifestyles, and you'll see all those different people have different products in their hands, so the surfer needs a surfboard, the guy, lady who's um, who likes fitness, she buys fitness clothing, the guy who's a musician buys musical instruments, and so on and so forth. Then we have geodemographics. These are, these are segments um, based on where people live, their neighborhoods. People in the same neighborhood will usually buy similar things. For example, in flats, most people have tumble dryers because there's nowhere to hang their clothing. Whereas people who live in the suburbs that have like a nice garden will often buy braai, wood, and charcoal because they have space to braai on the weekends, whereas people who live in flats can't really braai. 
So geodemographics is people's lifestyle based on where they live. Okay, so it's a combination of psychographics and geography. We call it geodemographics. Okay, then we have dimensions that are used in psychographic segmentation. These are all dimensions. Activities, interests, and opinions. You need to know these. So activities include work, different occupations people have. Although occupation can also be considered part of demographic segmentation. Please remember that. The hobbies people have, right, like crafts, social events. What types of social events do some people like to go to? Do they like to have dinners? Do they like to, do they like to um, go out to eat? Then people have their holidays. Do they like to go overseas? Do they like to go traveling? Do they, what are, do they like to go to family? Right? Then you have entertainment. Do people like to go clubbing? Or do they like to play games? Or what do they like to do? Club, that's not... Club membership is like, um, like do they belong to a tennis club or do they belong to what type of club? Then people, shopping activities, do they go shopping on weekends, do they like to go to markets? Sporting activities, what types of sports do they like to play or watch? Then interests. Um, and you'll often find that magazines are segmented on activities, interests and opinions. So you'll get magazines that are for different hobbies holiday magazines, uh, different types of sporting magazines, even shopping magazines. You even get magazines on based on different interests like family and home and different types of career-based magazines and fashion magazines, media magazines that all appeal to different people's interests. Then you have opinions. Yeah, you'll also have magazines and um, newspaper sections based on people's opinions. So you'll have a political section in the newspaper, a business section, an economic section, an education section, a culture section, a future section, and so forth. That all appeal to different people's opinions. Then we have benefit segmentation, the last one. This is the process of grouping customers into market segments according to the benefits that they seek. So this base is different from others. It bases groups on their needs and wants. You can use other segmentation variables in conjunction with segmentation in, in conjunction with benefit segmentation, like um, toothpaste is a good example of benefit segmentation. Some people want whitening. Other people want uh, toothpaste for sensitive teeth. Other people want removal of plaque. So it's benef different benefits that people seek from the product. And so they, they develop different um, toothpastes for different segments. So the marketing mix can then be adapted to the needs and wants of each segment. You'll have a different product price, place, and promotion for each of the segments based on the, the benefits they seek. And there's a very good table in your textbook that covers snack food. It's an example of benefit segmentation.